Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Dorit Oren of Gilat. Now Dorit, thanks for joining us. Now, Very glad to be here, thank you. Gilat are involved in cellular backhaul solutions. Absolutely. Now can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure, yes. Gilat, you know, has been in the business of satellite communication for over 25 years now. And we've been doing an assortment of various applications, but particularly cellular solutions or cellular backhauling is a big growth market for Gilat. What we're seeing is with the surge of uh, data needs today over the mobile phones, there's more and more demand for satellite backhauling, and I'll explain why. We're seeing really a convergence of several trends. On the one hand, we have the need for data growing and more and more people using mobile phones or smartphones. So we're seeing more and more LTE networks on the one hand. On the other hand, when we look at the satellite industry, we're seeing a lot of high throughput satellites, a lot of additional capacity that is bringing costs down because of the multi-spot beams. So because of the reuse of frequency, we're seeing prices come down. So on the one hand, there's a great demand for data on mobile phones. On the other hand, we're seeing the low, uh, lower prices with HDS. And on top of that, Gilad has brought in innovation on three levels that I'd like to explain in order to make this the prime time for moving to LTE backhauling. So the first thing Gilad did was bring to market the fastest modem or the fastest VSAT on the market that can work at up to 200 megabits per second. And that's pretty outstanding and unprecedented. And that's very important to be able to meet the high speeds of LTE in order to give the actual handset users the performance that they really require. So that's one point. The second point that we've done is we've uh, patented uh, ex acceleration that overcomes the satellite delay. So we have TCP acceleration done on our solution in software in order to bring up the speed to the full terrestrial speed that people are accustomed to. So that's the second point. And on top of that, the third point is the business case, that it, in order not only complementing the high throughput satellites that have reduced cost, we're also using uh, MFTDMA, which is an access scheme which allows bandwidth sharing. And this bandwidth sharing that we're allowing in both directions is reducing costs substantially. So we have also now the business case. So how do mobile operators feel about having to use satellite solutions? So I think in the past, mobile operators were maybe a little concerned about using the satellite, thinking that either it would cost too much, the high operating expenses, and thinking that maybe it was only a niche play for very remote regions. But right now we're seeing with LTE backhauling that it's a different game. It's no longer a niche play. And as a matter of fact, an M&O that moves to uh, LTE with satellite backhauling can do it much, much faster than with the traditional methods and can really beat the incumbent there when expanding to LTE. So there's a time to market issue here that can be addressed very well with satellite backhauling because of the speed of deployment. Now you mentioned that there's a history of people thinking cost is a problem with satellite. Right. How do you overcome that? Well, it requires education. Uh, to explain that there's some changes that have happened in the industry and those changes have to do a lot with the launch of many many new satellites over the last few years and more anticipated that are reducing the cost of satellite bandwidth by an order of magnitude so this is a fantastic decrease in cost and the high uh, cost that people used to hear about are no longer the case and that is making a huge difference so people are beginning to hear that and ask about that and understand that there's actually a business case here, that it's not something only for a niche play. Now, I assume when you say about new satellites being launched, we're talking about the impact of HTS satellites. Absolutely, the high throughput satellites. The HTS satellites, and there's an abundance of them, and we see you know, programs from all the major uh, satellite operators, and we're partnering with many of them. And uh, together, I think we're bringing very interesting solutions to the market. Are they really the game changer that everybody is talking about? I, I think they're part of the game changer. There's, I think there's, there's a few issues happening together. As I mentioned before, there's the issue of the, the prices coming down, and that's a game changer. But also there's the need issue. When we talk about cellular and the need for data, which is really the, the unprecedented, this uh, 
everybody's talking about the ubiquitousness of mobile phones and how people are not looking at each other anymore, but looking all the time at their handsets. And they're, they're not talking, they're moving data. So it's LTE and it's data, and that's also changing the game. So there's a few factors that are converging together, together, of course, with what I mentioned of technology innovations that are making it not only possible, but also economically feasible. Now, we're sitting here conducting this uh, discussion, and we're in Singapore. What about satellite-based solutions in Asia? I mean, what's the uptake on that? We're seeing a lot of interest here, actually not only, but of course also here. Uh, we've deployed uh, several um, cellular solutions around the world, specifically for LTE. I cannot mention the uh, vendor name, but a large operator in Japan has tested our solution and uh, has seen uh, amazing high results in terms of performance. And we're very proud of that test that was done. We came up way on top, meeting the uh, the very uh, high performance requirements of the cellular uh, handset. So we're seeing that definitely uh, happening in Japan and there's some other opportunities in Asia. But in Asia, we're seeing also opportunity uh, for uh, installations of uh, cellular solutions in remote areas that are not only the backhaul, but also the cell that we're providing right now. And I, I'd like to talk about that a little bit, if that's okay. Um, you know, we're in the business, of course, of, of the satellite backhaul. However, we have found that for many of the remote regions around the world, they don't need the big macro cells. A small cell is sufficient for the dispersely populated region. And what we're doing right now is we're marketing the cell itself, the small cell itself. We're calling it Cell Edge. And that is a solution that we're marketing together with the backhaul. So we have a complete integrated solution of the small cell and the backhaul in order to address the needs of these remote areas at a very efficient uh, cost because of this tight integration, giving the high performance and therefore also reducing the cost. Now, Galat has been around for a long, long time. How do you keep ahead of the game? Well, a lot of uh, hard work in R&D, a lot of innovation, like some of the things I mentioned, like that example with the Capricorn, that 200 megabit per second uh, VSAT, that's uh, one of the acceleration techniques that we've developed that are now uh, patent pending uh, to accelerate the performance uh, over satellite. Uh, we have uh, R&D centers in several places in the world, not only in Israel, but other locations as well. And it's, it's a lot of work to uh, keep up and uh, innovate with the technology. Duri, thank you very much. Thank you very much.